Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode on a grateful heart. You know, this podcast episode is is obviously the season of of gratitude as we kick off November today. By the time you hear this podcast being recorded, as uh, being released, it's November first, and so of course we're entering the season of uh, or the month of November and Thanksgiving and all of that. And so I think it's natural time to talk about gratitude and uh, the power of a grateful heart. And, you know, I wrote um, my book, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made, A Grateful Heart, 30 Days of Inspiration for Women. And it's been several years. I think I released that in, in 2016. So it's been several years ago, but but every season I come back to this and the power of a, a gratitude practice and a grateful heart and why it's important to begin with. And so it, there again, just a timely reminder of practicing gratitude and why it's helpful, why we should think about it. You know, the benefits of practicing gratitude are proven scientifically. And as I read and prepared to write uh, A Grateful Heart, I was just astounded by all the studies that showed how gratitude helps you live longer and decrease stress and have better relationships and become more resilient and less focused on yourself and be kinder and healthier and sleep better. Who would have thought practicing gratitude and and being grateful helps you sleep better and be more productive, more optimistic and helps you have better self-esteem. So all that sounds like an ad for a wonder drug. And the funny thing is you don't need a prescription and it's free. It's available to every single one of us. And, you know, a lot of times we think that wonderful, magical things are complicated. And honestly, wonderful, magical, powerful things aren't aren't complicated. We underestimate how simple things applied consistently result in huge changes over time, right? The power of consistency. And, you know, it's not the book that I wrote that that changes you. It's the process of practicing gratitude. You don't have to buy the book to to practice gratitude. You can simply be intentional about doing it. The power isn't in the words. It's in your heart, right? Because that's the journey that you travel. And a grateful heart helps us keep that perspective. So, you know, that's really where it, 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 where it allows us to be centered. Finding our center is so important and staying in our center is so important. And that's one reason I talk about a gratitude practice and the power of a grateful heart because it helps us stay centered. When the world tries to knock us off balance, when life happens and life gets in the way and problems happen, and absolutely as we come up on a, a hectic holiday season, it gets challenging to stay peaceful and optimistic and calm and not stressed out. And maybe that's you, right? Maybe this is the first year that you are a single parent after a, a tough divorce this year. And you're going into this holiday season and you already know it's going to be challenging because of that. Or maybe you're, you know, struggling with health challenges or, a, you know, a debilitating disease or financial issues or career struggles or frustrated with someone at work or whatever it is, right? These problems, I don't have to tell you, life is hard. Life is full of problems. But when we can stay centered, more value centered, it's much easier to keep a better perspective on these problems as they occur. So, you know, I really wanted to drill down into that, you know, because we can become inspired when we practice gratitude. Gratitude is the feeling of being thankful. It's joy, appreciation, and being grateful for something or someone. Because when you hold gratitude, it's impossible to hold bitterness, right? Those are two conflicting opposite emotions on the spectrum of emotions. You, When you're holding on to gratitude, you cannot hold on to bitterness at the same time time about the same thing. They they cannot coexist, right? Light and darkness can't be in the same room. If there's darkness in there, when you turn the light on, the darkness runs away. And so when we focus on the positive emotion of gratitude, we have to let go of the negative emotion in, in that space. So 
and you know, we have to be diligent about giving thanks in a season of discouragement or distress or disappointment or death or, or personal disaster or holiday stress or whatever the season might be. Um, because it does help us keep that perspective and that's powerful as we face those challenges. And, you know, the thing about a power of a gratitude practice is it's not, it's not having a book at the end of the month. Let's say your gratitude practice is just getting out a notebook. You could pick up a notebook at Walmart for a dollar, right? And write down every single day on one page some things that you're gratitude that you're grateful for. That that could be your gratitude practice. It could be that simple. But the power isn't in looking back a month from now and saying, "Well, now I have a notebook of things I said I was grateful for." That's not the that's not the the point. The point is it's focusing on a gratitude practice helps us be more grateful in the moment. Because if you take time, let's just say every morning, just a couple minutes to jot down something that you're grateful for, then you start to train your brain to be more aware of opportunities to be grateful. And it's kind of like if you've ever, have you ever bought a car? Like maybe you went car shopping for a um, Toyota 4Runner. And suddenly everywhere you look, every shopping center you go to, every car you pass on the street is a Toyota 4Runner. And it's not that there are more 4Runners, right? It's just that you're more consciously, subconsciously aware of them. Or maybe you haven't had that experience with a car, but you bought a new purse and then suddenly you, you see that purse in different places. Um, or a new outfit or a new sweater or wh whatever it is. But a lot of times it's not that there are more of that thing around. It's just that we're more aware of it when it occurs, right? Because our brain filters out unnecessary information. And that's okay. That's a healthy coping mechanism. Our brain has to process out something because we're bombarded by so much information. And so what we want to do with a, a gratitude practice is making sure that we're not filtering out the things that we can be grateful for, because that's the power is not tomorrow morning when you sit down to jot it down, it's being aware of it in the moment. And I think I shared the story with you a few podcast episodes, but it, it kind of fits here. So I wanted to share it again, just briefly with that different perspective, of course, different context. I was driving, um, home from running and I apparently ran over like one of those blades from a uh, a lawnmower, like a big lawnmower or a trimmer or something like that. Anyway, this, all I know is I'm driving down the road, I was approaching a stoplight to turn and slowing down to make sure that the traffic was clear and I could, you know, yield um, if I needed to and ran over this giant thing of metal and it punctured my tire. And as I turn through the intersection, I feel the tire just, you know, completely run out of air. And of course the car starts to wobble and, and it, I wasn't going fast. It was not particularly dangerous, but, um, I pulled over immediately because I knew the tire was, was gone and I get out and sure enough, there's this, you know, giant piece of metal sticking out the sidewall of my tire and the tire is completely flat. I mean, it didn't take seconds for all of the air to just blow out of it. And I had to call. Unfortunately, I, I pulled over like right in the into the parking lot of a tire store. So my, you know, I had to call Mac and say, hey, help. <laughs> Not only am I stranded, but, you know, he does the, the car stuff much more than I do. I do the, the cooking stuff. He does the car stuff. That's kind of one of the ways we divide up. And so I kind of defer to him on things like tires and what size tires or what kind of tire you know that's that's his that's his department so um he he was fortunate he was able to just come get me right away and help me with that and it was all resolved pretty quickly but it, i share that story and you know my first inclination in the moment when i i feel the tire go out and i pull over and i look out and there's this giant piece of metal sticking out of the car my first inclination in that moment is you know, wow, I'm I'm just so grateful that A, this happened when I was, you know, just less than half a mile from my house and right in the parking lot of a tire store. And I wasn't driving down the interstate going 70 miles an hour when this happened. And I really didn't have anywhere that I had to be. So it was inconvenient, 
but, you know, it didn't make me late for an appointment or something like that. And so all of these thoughts are my first thoughts in this situation. And it's not because anyone else couldn't have looked at that and gone, well, you know, you could be frustrated that, well, you're on your way home from running and now you're not going to get a shower clearly in the next 15 minutes because you got to deal with the flat tire and it's going to cost some money to get the tire repaired. And, um, you know, I had to interrupt Mac in his day to come get me. And, um, you know, my car was out of commission for the whole day while they got a new tire. And it's the same scenario, right? And it's, Anyone could look at it in so many different ways, but I much prefer to look at it with a positive perspective. But that's not because the negative is not there, right? It's the same frame. It's the same picture in the frame. I just choose to look at it with a positive perspective because I want my brain to be more aware of the the positives. What things can I be grateful for in the moment? Because then... When things like this come up, it's not that they are always going to be great things. I mean, having a flat tire is not a good thing, but I focus on the good things and the positives about the situation. It could have been worse. Let me focus on the good things about this. And that is what the power of a gratitude practice allows you to do is be grateful in the moment. Not having the notebook written down of things that the next day you're like, oh, I'm grateful for, you know, being able to get my tire fixed. The power of it is training your brain to be more aware of the little things that you can be grateful for in the moment. So when these problems happen in life, you're training your brain to be more conscious and more aware to see more of the good things, not ignoring the bad things, right? This isn't a Pollyanna scenario where you pretend you don't have problems. It's just choosing to focus on the the better aspects of the situation. And we can find them. Now, sometimes it's tough to find them. Sometimes it's really tough to find them. Sometimes it's really, 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 you have to look really hard and get a magnifying glass out. But, but they're there. And the more we look for them, the easier it becomes to spot them. And that's the power of a gratitude practice. Right? It's the moment of, of practicing gratitude with a grateful heart and saying, as I go through my day, let me be grateful for the little things in this moment, all of the things in this moment, the big things, because I want to, to make sure that my emotions are in the habit of looking for the positives because they're there. I just have to be making sure that I'm focused on them. And focusing less on the negatives, right? I want to be focusing more on the gratitude and less on the bitterness because the bitterness doesn't serve us. As we focus more on the gratitude, we're positioning ourselves to be more aware of not just the little moments of gratitude, but be more aware of the things we can control in the situation, right? If we're focusing only on the negative or the things that we cannot control or what we don't like about the situation, we're never going to fix it. And maybe we can't fix it, but if we can focus on first changing the situation, if we can, and if we can't change the situation, then we have to change ourselves. And that's tough to do. I have absolutely no doubt that it's tough for, for everyone at different seasons of life, but we all have the power and the freedom to do that. And so as you come into this stressful, maybe not stressful, but as you come into this holiday season, uh, you know, take this month. This is November. We're kicking off November today with this podcast episode. Take this month to just spend a few minutes every morning and get you a notebook and or a gratitude jar, right? Maybe it's not a notebook. Maybe it's a jar that sits on your office desk and every morning you write down on a post-it note something you're grateful for and crumble the post-it note up and throw it in the jar. And then at the end of the month, dig all of the notes back and, and look through them. I bet it'd be fun to do, you know, a different way to, um, apply this concept in a, in a personal perspective is maybe a gratitude notebook for someone in your life. What if you took the next 30 days and, and put a few things every day in a page in a notebook? Hey, I'm grateful to, my spouse, for example, for, hey, he took out the trash. I'm grateful to you today. Write him a little letter, right? Every day. Hey, I'm grateful for you because today you took out the trash. Today you remembered to make up the bed. Today you came and got me when my tire was flat, right? Whatever it is, that would be a great gift in a relationship is 
mindful gratitude in that relationship. Not that the person is going to be perfect or that they don't have flaws, but you're going to be training yourself to be more mindful about all of the good things that they do. These are little things that you can change your perspective and your mindset relative to that relationship. I guarantee you it will reap dividends in that relationship, not in just, well, I mean, and in, in, in not just yourself. It absolutely will reap dividends in your mindset and your attitude towards that other person. But think how cool it would be to get such a gift at the end of a month and on a full n- notebook of letters of someone who wrote that said, hey, I'm thankful you, for you today because... I mean, wow, can you imagine that would just, it would be so powerful. And so both the the giver and the receiver in that scenario would be just incredibly grateful for each other. So yeah, pouring dividends into a relationship. Um, Maybe it's not a personal relationship. Maybe it's somebody at work or a friend, um, something like that. Just take a moment and say, hey, I'm grateful to you today because of, and you know, Thanks or gratitude or appreciation is not always expected, but it is always appreciated. And it, even more so when it's timely, right? So just a couple of ideas on thoughts on how you can harness the, the power of a grateful heart and a gratitude practice into your life um, this November. And uh, what are you thankful for? Until next time. Start increasing your influence and maximizing your potential with Rhea's audiobooks. Available at audible.com, amazon.com, and iBooks. Please visit RiaStory.com to learn about Rhea's books, resources, speaking, and training programs. Thanks for listening.